Hi, this is Nicole Rivera, and you're listening to the Stop Writing Alone podcast. I don't know if you can hear the difference, but I can. I have a mic again. For many, many months now, I've been uh, resistant to doing the podcast because I haven't had my official mic connected. I've been doing it like on my laptop with just the laptop mic, and I've always felt like, oh, that's not great. But um, we're back in business, ladies and gents, back in business, and I'm feeling much better for it. And hopefully it's sounding better for it as well, and that you're having a better listening experience. Crossing my fingers, can't wait to listen back. But this week's episode is not all about how I have a mic again. That is not what Stop Writing Alone is about. Stop Writing Alone is all about writing. And this week I want to talk about a phrase that sort of came to me in... um, in a internet conversation, you know, you're writing in comments, and I was t- uh, talking to somebody about the writing prompt party, and I said, you know, it's it's basically just it's writing fitness with friends, and I was like, whoa, I love this term because it encapsulates so much of what I am w- always trying to bring to the community. And uh, I wanted to just recap why I think that, what that's all about, and where this conversation happened. What is writing fitness with friends? When can you do it? Why do you want to do it? And um, yeah, that's it. So that's what we're going to talk about this week. So in late January, Jackie Dana, who has been a longtime member of the Stop Writing Alone community, approached uh, both myself and Heather Huffman, who's another member of the Stop Writing Alone community, uh, about her community that she began on Substack called Fictionistas. And I've interviewed Jackie a number of times. She's talked about Fictionistas on this podcast. But what Fictionistas is, is a community created on Substack specifically for people who are on Substack writing fiction. And so Jackie came to both Heather and myself and said, ladies, I know you love writing prompts. I've got this community of fiction writers and I think a really fun activity could be sharing writing prompts with them and getting them to share their writing within the community and so we created uh, what is called the great Substack prompt celebration because it is multifaceted in that each month we are inviting people from fictionistas or any fiction writers on Substack to a writing prompt party where we share a writing prompt, and then uh, we also put it out on the Fictionistas Substack so that anyone who's on Substack can write a story to that prompt. And by the end of the month, we're asking everybody to share their writing, and then we spotlight the writers um, that, you know, we had like the most popular person who had the most likes, and then Heather had her favorite, and I had my favorite, so we have a couple of spotlights each month. And so this is going to be a monthly project that we're doing. And the reason why... Uh, we're doing this. This is something that we got into the conversation of at the end of this month, after doing our first month of the great uh, Substack prompt celebration. So we wondered if the people in Fictionistas or writers, fiction writers as a whole, have a, a solid understanding of what this activity can provide for you in your writing. So I've done a number of episodes on the power of prompts. I even did an episode arguing against writing prompts and why you might not want to use them. So I've talked a lot about prompts and that is part of this conversation, but the whole conversation is about the prompts in community. And that is why it is writing fitness with friends, right? So this is something that came up in the chat when we were explaining what this whole uh, challenge would be. I, I just responded to one of the people asking questions. I'm like, it's basically like writing fitness with friends. And as soon as I typed that out, I was like, oh, that's it so perfectly. I need to do an episode on this to really talk about this fitness that we get from doing writing prompts and the power of doing that with friends within community. So writing prompts, the power of writing prompts. 
there's there's a lot of resistance to writing prompts, and we saw this in fictionistas right away. People were like, oh, I really don't like prompts. I don't, I, you know, like maybe I'll give it a shot, but I don't. And I and I get it. First of all, there is the, you know, how much brain power do we have? every single month, every single week, every single day that gets devoted to our writing. And we have our works in progress and we have our work and we have all the writing that we need to do every single day. Uh, And many of those things are passion projects and that's where we want to give our best and greatest energy to. Um, So like why on earth would we want to... you know, set aside or take away some of that energy for an idea that someone else is randomly throwing at us, a writing prompt that, you know, we have no attachment to, has, you know, nothing to do with the world that we're writing in, and is just going to waste writing time and writing energy. So I hear that and I feel that when people um, first have that resistance, But I don't see doing writing prompts as stealing that energy. Time, yes. I mean, there's, you know, we have a finite amount of time and and you are going to be taking away one writing time to do another activity. I, there's, I can't argue against that. But why is it worth your time? It's the same as any other fitness activity that, you would engage in, right? So if you were to start a running routine or a swimming routine or whatever other exercise that you love to do, it is going to take a set amount of time out of every day, every week, whenever you decide to do it. And it is going to take that time from other parts of your life. You're going to have to stop doing one thing to do this exercise. So why do you do it? because it makes you feel better and it gives you more energy for all of the other things that you're doing. It's good for your body. It helps you be feel stronger and not just feel stronger, but actually be stronger. All of these things, I believe, are true about engaging in writing prompts. I, it never fails, no matter what I'm working on in my own work in progress, whatever is my passion project, particularly when I was running Happy Campers Club, which was a daily space where I was showing up for writing community every single day of the week for an entire month. I was doing my own writing Monday through Thursday, and then Friday would be writing prompt day. We would have a writing prompt party every single Friday. So I would diverge from my work in progress, pull out a random prompt, and write a story that, you know, just uh, I wasn't invested in. I just needed to write the story because I was showing up for the writing prompt party. It never fails for me that doing that somehow enlivens my creative spirit that when I'm returning to my work in progress, there is a renewed sense of energy for that that project. Sometimes, absolutely, in the writing prompt party, I will sort of be triggered with an idea of something that's going to come back to my project. That's, I mean, that's a win-win, right? If something um, actually applies to your your work in progress. But I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about this giving yourself some sort of break, but and and letting your creative muse or whatever we want to call it, play in the sandbox a bit for something that's not, you know, heavy and important and, you know, all of the things that that it carries for you. And just, you know, be that new writer again with a new idea. You know, we we talk about that shiny new idea issue and it's like, oh, I can't finish things because I'm going after a shiny new idea. A writing prompt party is a great place to just like play with a shiny new idea that you can easily put down to work to return back to your project. So that's that energy that I feel like it gives to us just like exercise does, right? A regular fitness routine would give us physical energy and health, but it also makes us stronger. And this is 
undeniably an effect of working with writing prompts and writing prompt parties for me, right? So I do these very regularly within community where we share a writing prompt, we all write a story, we all read it aloud. And over the years, I have become a stronger writer for it. Why? Number one, I'm I'm on a timer. I'm learning to get to the story faster. I'm learning how to, when I read my stories aloud, I'm, I'm hearing the things that, the missteps I'm making, but I'm also hearing the things that I enjoy about my writing. And I'm replicating the things that I like. I'm dropping off the things that I don't like. And I'm getting this iterative process over and over again in a much quicker space than I do with my larger works in progress. The other aspect of it is not just me writing on the page and reflecting upon those stories that I write on the page, but also in a writing prompt party, we read aloud in community. So when the writing time is up, it's not just that I am reflecting upon my story. I'm also hearing how other people tackled the same prompt. And I'm so into it because it's so like lighthearted and fun and party atmosphere that I am just giddy with what did that person pull out of that prompt and how did they get their character to jump off the page so I'm learning 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 from other writers I mean we talk about this all the time that as writers we have to read a lot we have to continually immerse ourselves in story to um, better ourselves and and you know become more fluid with language when you're in a writing prompt party and you know for the February fictionistas writing prompt party we had I want to say it was almost 10 people. I feel like I'm trying to envision my Zoom screen. And it was just like, we definitely had a Brady Bunch situation going on, maybe even some more people. So I had 10 different stories, boom, 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 that I'm hearing how people dealt with dialogue, how some writers were so poetic in their in their prose that it was like, wow, you know, how do I you know, how do I make sure I latch on to that kind of description? Then, then yes, description, world building, bananas world building happened in February that I was like, where did these people just like land in this brand new planet of theirs in this 15 minutes and then convey it to me? So I'm learning, learning, learning all the time. And that is making me stronger. So I don't know. What else did I say was fitness? It's it's it it's that transfer of energy. It's definitely that strength. Is it's all of those things, the same things that we get from exercise. Um, and then we have this idea that it's writing fitness with friends. I love writing prompts, and I am the wackadoo that will sit here by myself and pull out my storymatic deck and pull out some cards and write it and set a timer for myself and write a story based on the prompt. Like, I'll do prompts on my own. Absolutely. I have no problem with that. Um, you know, Heather Huffman, who, who I work with on, uh, on this collaboration, she's got uh, sprinkled inspiration. She shares prompts every single day from her sub stack. So I'll see some of those prompts and say, yeah, yeah you know, I want to sit and write a, a story on that. So I'll sit and write a story on my own. But I cannot deny over these years, um, particularly because of Stop Writing Alone and doing these things so frequently that there is huge power in doing it in community over doing it solitarily. There's benefit to do it alone, but I feel like there's so much more benefit. And I basically just told you the greatest benefit, and that is hearing each other's stories. The other thing is when we um, read aloud, it's really, we're not looking for critique at that point. It's really like a cheerleading session of what were the things that you heard that you love from this person's story. And to get that kind of feedback immediately of like, I loved how you did X, Y, and Z, uh, is really so helpful because you say, oh, these are things that readers or listeners in a writing prompt party are 
are connecting with. These are things that I do well. Um, you know, and again, that's stuff that can come back to my work in progress. How can I take this, this, uh, description or this type of, uh, verisimilitude that, that the dialogue gave in my very short story to my, um, my longer work that I'm working on. You know, it's, it really is, uh, I don't know. I just absolutely love it. And I feel like when people experience it, they do get all of these things. But I do understand and I often hear an initial resistance to the entire idea. So I wanted to bring this conversation back into the community because especially now that we are in the post-pandemic world of it all, and you may, listener, be getting ready to not only engage in community offerings that I have, whether it's in Fictionistas or in Stop Writing Alone or other online communities, you may also be getting that itch of saying, you know, I want to have my local community and meet people face-to-face. This this event for writers and community is to me one of the best things that you can do with a a writing community. It helps you introduce yourselves to one another in terms of your writing style. Um, It helps to break down these walls of defensiveness in our writing because we're all on that first draft fiction stage when we're in a writing prompt party it creates a sense of vulnerability that breeds closeness very quickly without being harmful to one's ego or passion project right so we're just taking these these throwaway stories but we are giving ourselves an opportunity to, to open a vein and bleed about them and do that together in community. And it's a bonding process. I, I find writing prompt parties to be a bonding process. And when I have my local writing group and people are joining and, you know, some, sometimes they'll say, this is my first writing group, or I haven't been to a writing group in a long time. Uh, what do all these different meetings mean? Because, you know, I'll, I'll have writing prompt meetings and um, critique meetings, and then we have write-ins. I always recommend that a new writer come to a writing prompt party first, because to me, it's the, it's just a great introduction to what community can offer. It is writing fitness with friends. It is the reason that we want to meet together. It's the reason we want to stop writing alone. We want to become better, stronger, healthier writers. We want to do it in community. And a writing prompt party does all of those things. So um, so yeah, are you doing anything like this with your writing community? Have you experienced it yet? Do you feel and this, this is very much open for conversation, and perhaps I'll have a roundtable um, podcast episode about this. Is there an argument that you feel solid on that this is a complete waste of your time? I'm very curious about um, that argument and how it... Um, I just haven't, I haven't heard someone argue it to a point where I'm convinced but also most of the people that I'm talking to are people that have come been resistant experienced it and then found like okay I can see where this fits in my world so I don't know if this is just the uh you know the bubble that I'm in and these are the people that I'm talking to so if you are a listener and and you are still unconvinced of what prompts can do for you, particularly doing prompts within community. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what um, the 
the argument is. I the one argument that I've I think I start I said this at the top of the episode, but in case I didn't, that makes absolute sense to me is if you don't have the time because the time is the one thing that there is a trade off, and I get that. And there are a certain number of hours in the day, and we have all of the various responsibilities that we have to do, and perhaps the writing that you are doing for your passion project and your work um, is like you have already squeezed that in as tightly as you can. Um, It is a time commitment. So I get that. Um, But I feel like if that is the solitary argument, even somebody who's saying that they would say, but if I had the time, I could see where this would be uh, beneficial. So I'm curious if you're totally against it and, and what you would do instead to you're here listening to stop writing alone so you're interested in writing community and you're interested in um you know getting together with writing friends what is then your writing fitness with friends if it is not writing together and doing something like this so that is my uh my thinking and my question of the week if you are a fiction writer who is on Substack and you're not already a uh, subscriber to Fictionistas, I highly recommend it. Um, Jackie hosts various uh, Zoom calls once a month that, you know, the community comes together to discuss the uh, the challenges and the benefits of taking their fiction to Substack and helping each other out on how to promote each other and you know, all of the conversations that are in that world. Um, but now we also have the the writing fitness with friends. Uh, one of the guys in Fictionistas, I think it's Brian, is hosting office hours on the regular now, which is just basically an open thread where you can ask questions that you have if you are in the trenches of, of doing this kind of stuff. So it's really uh, a, a great community to be a part of, particularly if you are on Substack. I'm not sure I explained Substack. Substack is a platform similar to Medium, which we spoke about uh, quite often a couple of years ago. Substack is an open platform for writers to share their writing, to get subscribers. It's a great way to build an email list. But one of the um, great draws for writers is that you can have free subscribers and you can have paid subscribers. So it is a way to monetize your offerings. And uh, there is no fee for starting a Substack. It's simply if you do start to monetize your Substack, they will take a percentage of that money that you get. That's how Substack makes their money. Uh, but now Substack has even expanded. You can write on Substack, but you can also have audio on there. I do host this podcast on my Stop Writing Alone Substack. Uh, you can have video on there, all different types of things, and many people are using it in different ways. For myself, for Stop Writing Alone, it is really the home base for you to get all of the information right in your inbox. You can get the podcast delivered to you. You can get my um, writing prompt videos from YouTube delivered to you. And then also all of your invites to all of the events that I run throughout the month. Uh, Other people use it as a newsletter. I also have my Story Hoarder Substack, which is storyhoarder.substack.com. And that is completely free. And that is where I share my fiction. So I put my short stories up there. I've been serializing my YA novel Girl Unplugged on there. So there's so many different ways to use it. It's just very writer friendly. Um, I do enjoy the platform. And uh, so if you're out there, connect with me, connect with, uh, connect with Heather with her uh, Sprinkled Inspiration Substack, and connect with Jackie's uh, Fictionistas. Jackie has a number of Substacks. She also has Story Cauldron, where she writes about all of, uh, various things connected to her writing progr- process, as well as sharing her fiction. And she has Unseen St. Louis, because... Jackie loves her history and loves her hometown. And so she's constantly sharing um, cool 
unknown sort of stories of what's going on in St. Louis. And now she has even started a local speaking series of on history that I think she will be sharing with that Substack as well. So cool stuff. St. Louis is always uh, permeating through her fiction. So that's what her, inspired her to start it, but it has become a separate passion project all its own. I will put links to all of our Substacks in the show notes. Um, the March calendar for Stop Writing Alone will be coming out uh, later this week so that you can see all of the events that you can come to right now. Uh, the Stop Writing Alone paid community is $5 a month or $50 for the year, but that price is going up by the end of the month. So if you want to uh, subscribe at that price, now is the time. Basically what you get for the subscription is you get invited to all the events because I run free events and then I run events that are paid only. And some of those are, you get extra writing prompt parties, you get extra writing practice, which is where we follow the teachings of Natalie Goldberg's writing practice. We have write-ins and it, for the paid community, we have been doing what I call story club. We've been going through the 27 Essential Principles of Story by Daniel Joshua Rubin. This month, March, we will be reading Frankenstein as part of that and studying um, the lesson that is associated with that. Back in February, we read If Beale Street Could Talk by James Baldwin, and we had a great conversation on maxing out the middle of our novels because that was the lesson that we were taught by Baldwin. So, um, yeah, Story Club has been a lot of fun. And what is going to be coming the, later this spring is the results of the Critique Crew. We are building right now in community a compassionate, constructive critique model that will be hosted at Stop Writing Alone. Um, right now, there is a small group of us that are just neck deep in conversations about what makes a, a great critique conversation. And we are reading Matthew Salis's, um craft in the real world to help use as our foundational text moving forward with this. But there will definitely be more news about that coming up um, throughout the month of March. So thank you again for listening. Please subscribe. Please tune in. Uh, share with your writer friends. That's what we're all about. Stop writing alone. Have a lovely week. Happy writing. And thank you as always for listening.